Hey everybody, earlier this week I put out a video and we talked about how to create these fun canvas banners and we used PowerPoint to do that. And so I showed you a couple of different examples that you can do to create these interesting banners. And I actually had multiple people reach out to me, interestingly, um, asking about this banner, if it's possible to hyperlink the individual pills or dashes that we used. And the short answer is, the way that I showed it to you, no, this probably wouldn't be the good approach. You wouldn't want to hyperlink this image necessarily. But if you're interested in creating these banners, link above my head here. But what I was able to think of is I tried a different approach in that where I'm able to put them horizontally. I think you'd want them horizontal and not vertically. Then you can create this picture navigation menu. And this picture is probably not the best that you'd want to use. You'd want to use something with more solid colors and less gradients. But I think that this would be an interesting approach. And so I thought through it, and this is the solution I came up. So I'm going to show you how you can create these pills, how you can format them and hyperlink them. And we're going to be working again in PowerPoint and integrating it into Canvas. So let's go ahead and get started. So I decided to just use the same PowerPoint presentation I was using earlier for the other video. Created these interactions here. I'm going to go ahead and delete those. We're going to start from scratch. On this slide I have the image. This is the image I want to use. I'm going to put it off to the side and I'm going to start creating my pills. So to add the shapes, just like in the last tutorial, we're going to go to insert and we're going to go to shapes. And I like this rounded rectangle shape and so I'm just going to draw a shape. And I'm actually going to create, let's see, what's the width that we're going to want? If I hop back over to Canvas, you wouldn't want them too large. Maybe you do. It just, just depends on what you want, but you're going to have to try and eyeball the size. You know, 800 pixels would be probably about twice as wide. And so whatever you want, the PowerPoint width of the slide is 13.33 inches. And you can see the ruler at the top here. And so I can just determine if I put this at the center and maybe I want this to be four and a half or five inches. I'd put something like that. I'm going to take this little yellow dot and I'm going to stretch it so that it makes a really rounded pill shape. Then I, what I'm going to do is take my image and just make sure that the image over here is the same width as the pill. And once I get that lined up, goodness, it's not really wanting to line up. Here, let me click on this, go to shape format and see it's about 5.2. Let's just make that five inches. And this one, I'm also going to go to picture format, make that five, five inches. All right, so now it's good. And now how many pills am I going to want? Let's go ahead and select this. I'm going to hold shift and um, control on the keyboard and make a few copies of this. And so maybe I'll want it to be you know, something like that, but I'm noticing the pills are just too tall. I'm going to have to slim these down a little bit, maybe to something right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this bottom one so that it's flush. The bottom is flush with the bottom of the picture. And then I will go ahead and select all of those. Shape format, we're going to go to align and I'm going to distribute those vertically so that there's equal space between each of these. All right, so now I have those set. And you'll notice on the right that I have the shape, you know, the format shape window open. I'm going to close that down in order to get that then what I will do is right click, go to format shape, and now I have it open. One thing I also want to do is I'm going to select all of these, go to shape format, I'm going to take out the outline. I don't want any outline for these. And now we're going to enter, we're going to fill this in with the picture that we have over there. So with the format shape box open, I'm going to go to picture or texture fill. First I'll go ahead and copy this picture. And then when I go to picture or texture fill, what you'd want to do is paste it from the clipboard. Since I have the image already on the slide and I copied it, then I'll go to clipboard. Otherwise you could insert a picture, but um, you probably want the picture on the slide to begin with. And I'll show you why I'm aligning it this way. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that with the second image as well. So it's doing it from the clipboard, highlight both of these and just fill all of them in. Okay, now I'm going to hop over to this other slide. Sometimes what you might find is that when you go to, you know, the shape fill or the, the picture fill for the shape, it might squish the shape, something like this. It's essentially taking the image and it's making it really small like that. And so to avoid that, let me get that image back. 
what you do is click on the shape, go to format picture, and then go to this crop button. And you're going to have to grab the, the shape itself, not the handles to the crop. You're not going to crop it like this, but you're going to grab this and just stretch it out so that it's the same as the original shape. And then you'll get a shape like what we're seeing over here. I'm just saying because you might run into it where the shape just looks really weird. Like it's all squished for whatever reason. And that's the reason. You just need to stretch it out. All right, so now I have my four navigation shapes filled up with the you know, content of the picture here, but it's all every one of the shapes is the same and I don't want that. And so what I want to do, the top one's fine. The top is taking from the top part of the picture. I want these middle ones to take from you know the middle parts of the picture. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this one, go to format, the picture format ribbon. I'm gonna go up to crop and then I'm going to take this image, I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and just push it up so that it's aligned with that picture. And then I'll click outward and then I will do that with the other ones as well. So I'm going to go to crop and I'm going to push it up a little bit. And then this last one, crop, and I'm going to bring that up so that it's at the bottom. All right, so now I have some continuity with the picture. And so what I want to do now is add some text. What you don't want to do is insert a text box and put it over the image. These are shapes, and so you can just type right into the shapes. And so I'm gonna create a syllabus, if I can spell syllabus, I can't. And then I will do, what was the other one? Uh, modules, and then readings, and then resources, or whatever your navigation will be. And I'm gonna click all of these, I want a font that's really bold and Calibri is not doing that for me. And so you can see if you have something installed like an um, Arial Black and I have this font that I really like called Intro Rust Base. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bump it up a bit. Let's put it bold. You can determine if you want it to have a text shadow or not, a little drop shadow. I'm going to put uh, 36 looks a little big. I'm going to go maybe 33, 34 perhaps. All right, something like that. And then I want to continue formatting these. I'm going to select all of those. I'm going to go to shape format this time. I'm going to go to the shape effects. And for the last slide, we did something where it's kind of like a, an inner drop shadow effect. And I don't want that for these buttons because this makes it look like the image is inset, like indented inside the, the page. I want these to kind of pop off of the page because they're buttons. And so we're going to try a different drop shadow, and we're going to put an outer um, bottom right drop shadow, the shadow that's kind of offset a little bit. And that gives it that little three-dimensional look to it. And so now I think they are ready to go. Other effects that you could try, you could do a shape effect, and you could put a glow around your buttons if you wanted. So that would be kind of fun as well. I'm just going to stick with these ones. And what I'm going to do is right click on the shape itself and we're going to go to save as a picture instead of saving the slide. Last time we just saved the entire slide as a picture and then imported that. But I'm going to save each of these individual ones as pictures. And I want this to be a PNG. And the reason why is suppose I have some kind of color on the background of my canvas page. I want this to sit on top of the color Notice how this, when I put it over the other image, then it just looks like it's on top of the image. If I were to save this as a JPEG, for example, then what it would do is, if you see the rectangle, when I highlight this, it's squared. It's like, well, rectangled. It has these corners right here. And it would fill in all of that empty space with white. And I don't want it to be, I don't want it to fill in the space. In, in a rectangle. It doesn't need to, this is a rounded rectangle, not a rectangle. And so I want it to have this effect where it's not white, it's just kind of an element that's floating on top of that. And so I'm going to save these as PNGs instead of JPEGs. You could also do it as a GIF, I guess, but I think PNG is just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and save as a picture, make sure it's PNG, um, select your location, your file name, and go ahead and save, and I'll get all four of these saved. Okay, now I have my buttons saved, my images. I'm just going to put those off to the side. We're going to edit this canvas page, and I'm going to reset the page. I'm just going to delete everything, all the content here, and we're going to walk through what we want to do. And so 
So first off, I'm just going to drag and drop all of the images onto the page here. And I'm going to say that I hold the rights because we just created it. And so I do hold the rights. And that's for you know copyright purposes. And it looks like it put resources at the top. I'm just going to cut that out and put it at the very bottom there. And these are way too big. And so you could go click on image options and change the width. I'm going to do it in the CSS. So I'm going to take this first image here and I'm going to go to style equals um, width. And I'm going to put a width of maybe 350 pixels or so. And then I have my other image. So I'm going to copy the style and I'm just going to make all of the images the same right there. All right, so we still have some work to do, but I'm going to save it and see what that looks like. All right, so for right now, that's not great because I want them stacked one on top of each other. And the way to do that, I think what I would suggest, you want breaks in between and instead of paragraphs. And so I'm going to put my cursor in between two of them, hold shift on the keyboard, hit enter, and that puts a break in between them. And I'm going to delete this one. All right, so then when I go to the code, I have breaks and you're going to want that break instead of a paragraph. You don't want a, a distinct paragraph because that'll put too much space in between the images. And as so, we're going to preview this and we're going to find that there's a little bit too much space right here. You can see the lens flare right here. It should be like a perfect circle, but you can see it's broken up and then the circle continues down there. And I don't like that. So I need them to be a little bit closer together and we're going to use CSS to accomplish that. So I'm going to go ahead, hop over here in the style. After width, I'm going to put a margin on the bottom. Instead of having space in between, increasing the space between the elements, I'm going to take some space out. And I'm going to do that by going negative, let's try negative 15 pixels and see what that looks like. And I'll go ahead and save that. All right, so now you can see that it's a little bit closer together. There's still a little bit of space. Um, but yeah, that looks better. And you might need to tinker around. It just depends on you know what image you used and how wide and tall your elements are, your navigation buttons. And so I'm just going to put, I don't need to put it at the bottom. I don't need margin at the, the very last image, but just these images here. And so we'll go ahead and save and see if that looks good. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And so last thing we're wanting to do, since these are navigation buttons, we need to hyperlink them. You could do that in HTML. I'm just going to use the rich content editor. So I'm going to select this first one and you'll probably want the syllabus to go to some place in the course. So I'll click course link twice and I'm going to go to course navigation down here and I'll put that, I'll link that to the syllabus page. And then this other one modules, then I'll put a course link and for some reason I have to do it twice. I'll just put that as you know some random page, whatever. I'd probably have a page to go to and pretend like I'm hyperlinking the bottom two. We're just going to play make believe and so that these are all functional. And now you can see my cursor changes to the pointing finger and that indicates that it's hyperlinked. So when I click on it, then it goes to that page. If I want it to hyperlink and open to a different tab, then you just put a little bit of code in there. Um, you can put it anywhere. I tend to, it needs to be within this anchor, the hyperlink. Um, I usually put it after the href, where it's going, and you'll go target equals quotation mark underscore new quotation mark. So that's the HTML code for this hyper hyperlink should open up in a new tab. And you can also use blank for that underscore blank underscore new. And then when I click on that, then it opens it up in the new tab. So that's how you can get this fun interaction. Um, my last word of advice, like I mentioned before, you want maybe something that's more pattern. This is very, there's a lot going on. It's a sunset, it's Hawaii, it's a beach, there's dark spots and light spots, and it's interesting for us to tinker with, but you'll want to find something that's uniformly dark and put light text on it, or uniformly light, which I probably wouldn't do because you want contrast between the white background. Um, but if you had a light button, you'd want dark text. So I would suggest find a dark image and then put white or light text on top of it for accessibility purposes, for people with bad eyes like me, 
um, that it just pops off the screen and that it's intuitive. So I hope this is helpful for you. Feel free to share links. If you're using this content in your courses and you can share it with me, then put a link in the comments below and I'd love to see what you're working on. Until next time. Happy Disney morning.